Hey guys and welcome to another video from Stark's Warehouse. Carrying on from where I previously left you guys, um, we have started making the accordion itself, uh, which if you have watched the previous video you will have seen the plans and all the setup that we had ready for it. Uh, we have started building now. So first on the agenda was to actually cut out the mainframe box section for the accordion itself. Now the original idea was to cut out the wood pieces at a 45 degree angle as you can see I'm doing right here so that once the corners joined up they would have a nice clean 90 degree joint. So now that I've got all the angles cut in the pieces that I need I'm just going to quickly run over them on the bent belt sander at a 45 degree angle as well just to make sure that these edges are all nice and flat because you can see on the saw that I did use it doesn't leave such a great edge this wasn't able to keep uh, the piece level the whole time I had to do it by hand so I'm just going to run it on these just to smoothen the sides off and then we can go ahead and join them together now as you'll find out in just a second this didn't quite work out as planned Okay, so after getting all the pieces of wood cut out and put the 45 degree angle on, um, I wasn't exactly 100% pleased with the outcome. Um, so we're just going to ditch all of that together. Rather than having a 90 degree angle cut out at 45 degrees so the corners meet up flush, we're just going to use the 12 mil wood and just put that up to each other. Um, so you're still going to have a little gap where it butts up to each other but then we're going to get some wood filler and fill that in afterwards. Um, so while we're waiting for some more wood, um, we're going to move on to the next thing, which is the faceplate design. I did show you this in the original first video, but I'm going to take you back to it now. Okay, so this is the faceplate design that's going to be on the front of the accordion itself. As you can see, I've just started cutting out pieces um, from on the side. we put all pilot holes in so we can get the saw blade inside there to cut everything out. just finished and got the entire section cut out. Now I'm going to be using some little rasps and files to get into all the details just to clean it up and then I'm going to be sanding down afterwards for the final product. Okay, so now that we have the shape all cut out, filed and sanded down, this part is pretty much all done for now. Uh, we just need to wait until we've got the body all built together so that we can cut this faceplate out to the exact size and get it fit in place. So now that this part is as complete as it can be for now, we're going to see what's next and move on to something else. So I've just come out of the workshop at the moment just to get a little bit of peace and quiet so I can come and talk to you guys. The first part of the uh, framework is done. I did go out and get the wood yesterday, so I've been cutting that out, um, getting the rear part of the frame all cut out. Just about to go ahead and stick the front part together. Let's uh, to give you a quick, a quick bit of an overview. Basically, we'll just put some little struts of wood inside here in the corners so that we can screw, screw that to each other to keep it nice and secure. Then the rear faceplate and on the front, the front faceplate is going to go straight on here. It's going to be connected by the bellows in the middle. Um, so like I said, I'm just going to go stick the front section of this together right now. Um, so I'm going to show you guys me going ahead with that. So now that the front and rear bodies have been cut out and assembled together, I just need, I just need to cut out the faceplate for the rear and for the front. Now the faceplate on the rear is just a straight block of wood with holes in it, and the front faceplate is the design that I showed you earlier that I had cut out. As you 
can see here, the faceplate's now being cut out and it fits nice and snug into the body itself. And if I do say so myself, it looks pretty good. So now that the rear and front faceplates have been um, cut out and fixed to the main body itself, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out the pieces for the keyboard, which is going to sit on the front faceplate at the bottom. So it's going to give a little place for the keys to go, for um, obviously when you play in the accordion. Our accordion isn't going to play, it is only a prop, but obviously we need to get everything precise as if it was a real accordion. Um, okay, so it's the following day now, we'll just come back to this what we finished off yesterday and we've just realised that the design on the front we've cut out for should actually be that way around. So we've kind of messed it up a little bit, uh, well I have anyway. Um, I've put the extra wood here where it should be at the bottom. So now what we need to do is cut this top part off and move it to the bottom and then fill in the seam afterwards. Okay, so after cutting the bottom part of the faceplate off where I mistakenly went wrong, flipping the whole thing upside down and then gluing the bottom part back onto what was previously the top part, that's all set and good to go. Hopefully that's all fine. Once that was set in, I started on the keyboard itself. Um, now there will be a gap in between the keyboard because we're going to put some foam underneath um, where the gap is so that can, the keys can actually be pressed down and then they will rebound because of the foam underneath. Um, the keys all have a s hole at the back which a, either a metal rod um, or some kind of rod is going to go through the back to hold them up so that they'll have a pivot point so that it can be pressed down um, on the sponge. So that's all being cut out. I put some struts in between each one of the keys and cut all the fretboard out to make sure that there is enough room for each key to actually be pressed. So now that that's all done, the next job and the agenda is to attach the keys. Now the, the way that I'm going to do that is to take a metal armature wire, sort of drilled a hole, I don't know if you can see that there, um, straight through, well I've not actually drilled it, sorry, I've took a saw to it and it's cut straight down. I couldn't get a drill bit, obviously, to go all the way through. So I'll just put a slit straight through, made it a little bit wider at the bottom, the armature wire can slide through. Now the original keys, which are here, this is what Cheryl's made while I've been making the actual mainframe box itself. Um, so these are the keys, they're going to have a little button on the end as well to be able to actually press. Uh, these are the original designs as you can see the square part at the back where the armature wire goes through to get the pivot point. Um, once these actually went in for the holes they didn't, they didn't fit far enough up for the holes to align with the holes in the faceplate. So what I've had to do which I've described here is to alter that um, round the edges off, I'll we'll show you the difference here. So here's the original one, and then here's the one I've altered. So I've had to round the edge off, and then also taper it down on the side as well. Um, now with that done, that will actually line up with the hole or the saw line that I put in. See how much wire can go through, and then the keys can be attached. And believe it or not, that was pretty much two full weeks worth of work. For now, that's all I've got to show you guys. Um, but stay tuned because I will be coming back to you next Monday. It seems like Mondays and Tuesdays are becoming the regular upload day for me at the moment. So stay tuned, hopefully for next Monday. And we'll be back with another update and show you how far we've got on. Hopefully we should have the entire thing completed minus the paint by next week. Fingers crossed at least anyway. But stay tuned and you'll find out for yourself. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you next week.